four. Look at that picture, see what it We are in the house now. We are in the house now. Hi again, Tissa. <laughs> Hi, Jael. <laughs> All right, for all of those in the Facebook land, the Facebook, hey, Facebook patrol personnel, we are, it's commissioned, titled album, album Commission. This particular song is called Breaking Away, and because that's exactly what we're doing, we're breaking away from every chain that tries to bind us, that tries to keep us in the past, that tries to hold us down from pursuing the things of God. Hey. And Amen. so again, sometimes you just gotta throw on your throw on your rocky theme music <laughs> and let your faith continue to speak to the circumstance yes. and let it know that you're breaking away from everything. Hallelujah. I'm talking everything that tries to bind you and keep you down. So for those again, Facebook patrollers, we don't own oh, the, the rights, rights to, to this, this song, song, but it's a bad album. So if you if you're interested in commission, go pick it up. On iTunes right. or Spotify. Uh, it's an oldie but goodie. All right. 30 and 30 and, and below, you probably really understand who commission is. 30 and above. 30 and above. Thank you. Thank you. 30 and <laughs> but, above. But if you are like 25, this was definitely the cleanup music on Saturday morning. Oh, come on now. Come <laughs> on now. If you are uh, in your 20s, you had to clean the house to commission. Say amen, somebody. You had a good time. I'll tell you, boy. Hey, Eldris, are you back? You still out of town? <laughs> oh, how do you? Oh, well. <laughs> Kiki said her favorite pastors. Aww. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. We love you. We love you. How, how's your mouth, Kiki? Ah, oh, ma'am. Is that way? I'm putting my glass on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you write, uh, ma'am? What is that? A M R N. Is that uh, Amen? Amen. <laughs> hey, DeAndre. <laughs> oh, Warriors up in the house. So, once again, we're kind of opening it up to Breaking Away Commission Song. Kind of keeping our faith in the, in the same arena. I mean, staying in the arena of faith, even with what we're listening to, at least me particularly. Um, you know, earlier we were listening to um, uh, Israel Holton. It's a new season and it's a new day, a fresh yes. anointing that's coming our way. And so we can expect a fresh anointing, a fresh wind of his fire coming to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Tonette. Hey, Abraham, Tonette's friend. Amen. Praise God. She said, I ma'am. I ma'am. That's Amen. what that's what she was spelling, and it bet, I bet it autocorrected <laughs> to try to say amen, amen. but you were saying I ma'am. Amen. <laughs> well, we are grateful for all of you guys that are chiming in on tonight. You know, um, want to really roll around this third principle of this agricultural principle that God has given us. Um, over the last several weeks, you know, or even in the last several months, we have been in a particular series uh, that is really cloaked in the principle of anachinesis, the principle of renewing our minds, renewing our thoughts, aligning our minds and our thoughts up with God's thoughts, recognizing that 2020 has brought its set of challenges uh, both internally and externally. Uh, but as, as the people of God, we recognize what time it is, and we also begin to know what to do. 
And so tonight, just want to make sure that we're encouraging to you guys and building you up as you are, again, pursuing the things of God for your life, your individual life. We want to encourage you. If this message is blessing you and it's being a, a part of your spiritual repertoire and you're thinking, man, my cousin need to hear this. My uncle need to hear this. My auntie need to hear this. By all means, you know, slide them this message uh, or these series of messages because I believe that they are applicable to all of us uh, who are in the arena of faith and really want something greater from the things of God. Now, if you don't want nothing, if you don't, you really don't want to pursue uh, more for your life, uh, this is probably the wrong venue for you. Um, but at the same time, if you have an inkling that you want something better for your life, because the scripture has decreed and declared that God has placed eternity in our hearts. And so we know that you want something better. And that better doesn't have to be extravagant. It doesn't have to be huge. But it just means you want to be a better version of yourself. Or you want to be able to accomplish what it is that God has placed in your heart to accomplish. Then I got news for you. I feel like a, a commercial. Yes, this is the spot for you. <laughs> God has, has preordained and, and, and called us for such a time as this. And so we are encouraged tonight as we roll around this third principle, uh, this agricultural principle. And then I just pray that it's a blessing to you guys. I want to again shout out all of you guys that came out on last Sunday to Woo! celebrate us uh, or celebrate with, with us, us. Uh, in our new opening of the new facility. Not the new facility, but well, the new, it is a new, a new facility. facility. Yeah. Thank you, baby. <laughs> a new facility, all the great hard work. Uh, that was done by my daughter, Jael, and my wife, my ace here. I, all the hard work that was put into it, we appreciate them as well as all of those uh, who have contributed. We love you. We thank God for you. We can't be who we are without you. And so for all of you all that came to celebrate with us, uh, we appreciate you, our, our crew, all of you guys that were able to chime in on that Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. We appreciate all of you and your love and your support uh, financially, yes. uh, your faithful support of the ministry. Yes. We truly understand that God is already doing a new thing. We are sitting back to behold it, and we are preparing our spirits and our minds uh, to make room for increase, Hallelujah. that we're making room for growth, that we're making room uh, for development, that we are intentional about repositioning ourselves uh, as we align ourselves up with the principles of God. Hallelujah. And so it's, in, it, it's important uh, that I kind of say that on tonight because I really do want to continue to tie in uh, bas basically in a systematic theology way of all of the things that we've basically been learning so that there is something that you as the people of God, as an individual who is in the arena of faith can grab a hold to. I mean, no matter where you are on the spectrum of your faith, whether you are a new convert, you're new to the faith, or whether you've been in the faith for a while, there is always something I believe that God is uh, giving us that we can chew on so that we can be like that fourth uh, uh, ground that the scripture talks about to produce a harvest and a uh, uh, that our lives according to Timothy or I'm sorry Titus chapter 3 verse 14 don't turn there uh, becomes productive you know God wants all of our lives to be productive and not just for our sake but for the kingdom's, kingdom's sake. sake amen again we are like a city that's set up on a hill God has called you and I as the saints of God that when we face troubles, trials, situations, circumstances on whatever scale that they are, all right, that we hunker down and put our faith flag in, in the ground, ground and yeah, we yeah, tell yeah. the devil, get to scooping. You get to, <laughs> get you, to as Martin would say, you get, get to, to stepping. Step Right. <laughs> you get to step in devil because no weapon that's formed against God's people is yes. going to prosper. 
and every tongue that rises up against you and I, God, in his time will in condemn. judgment will condemn. So Amen. we are like the we are like the tortoise in the tortoise and the hare. We're going to continue to move forward slowly but surely, but steady and strong. We're not going to get caught up in the fast pace of things. We're not going to get caught up in the trends. We are going to stay hunkered down on what God is saying because we know that in the end, we will we, win. Amen. I, I like what Yolanda Adams says or Tremaine Hawkins. She sings the songs, don't wait, wait till, till the, the battle, battle is, is over, over. Shout, shout now. now. We not go wait to when it's you over. You know in the end. You know in the end we gonna wanna win. Wait. That drum so <laughs> tight. It's so tight. Wait it's so the tight. Is over. And then I love <laughs> Anthony Brown. I'm just shameless, not shameless plug, but Anthony Brown talking about this week. Yeah. Will be will a be. week for miracles. miracles. And we we decree and declare that over your yes. life that this, this week will be a week for miracles. miracles. Overcoming, over overachieving. Yes. And no matter what happened last week, that this, this week, week yeah. because because we recognize this is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to value today and visualize tomorrow. My goodness. So God, is he has been so wonderful to us. And so we have some great thoughts that we want to roll around with you guys on tonight. Uh, again, want to make sure uh, that you guys are getting the pragmatic truths of God's word. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that you can apply them to wherever, wherever you, you are. are. Because no matter where you are, there is always going to be the enemy that's going to per, per, try to prevent you and me mm -hmm. from moving to the next level. Yep, yep, yep. Matter of fact, I heard a wise man say that whenever we dare greatly, mm -hmm. that's when we begin to feel resistance more strongly. Hallelujah. So whenever you want to move forward in the things of God, you're going to always have someone or something mm -hmm. that's going to try to hinder you mm -hmm. from moving in the truth of God. And so tonight, just want to rehearse this in your your ears. I realize that we're going to be, we may say a lot of things on tonight. Uh, so you have the privilege of being able to go back and listen to the message. Mm -hmm. And I highly encourage you in doing that. Because faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. Not necessarily I've already heard that. But sometimes we just need to go back and refresh. Yes. And as Peter says, uh, stir up the gift Hallelujah. that's within us. That we, that we get enough uh, spiritual gunk to tell that devil, get to stepping <laughs> and leave my stuff alone. Right, right. Amen. Amen. So tonight we'll talk about, again, how to protect your crop or your harvest in the it's summertime. Summer. That's what we're going to focus on tonight. That is our principle number three. Uh, our first two principles, you can always go back to our last couple of Wednesday nights and kind of get caught up on those. Uh, but tonight, or get prepped for them. Thank you, babe. But we definitely want to spend some time on this one because I truly believe that this is worth uh, mentioning. It's worth uh, uh, talking about, and the only one that does not want us to that that does not want us to proclaim this message is the devil. Right? Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Thank you. Ain't nobody <laughs> mad but, but the, the devil. devil. All right. And if you on the devil side, you might be a little mad, mad too. too. But don't get it twisted. You can always come over to the God side. Yes. Amen. Yes. And you can be converted tonight. So uh, with that said and done, uh, let's go to the book of Galatians. We're going to launch off from the book of Galatians uh, chapter 5. Uh, and I will, uh, Galatians chapter 5. And we'll just pray tonight. Uh, baby, if you briefly pray with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you right now as we get ready to enter into your word. We thank you that it is your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask God that you would help us to exchange our thoughts for your thoughts, that we might receive and walk in the mind of Christ. We thank you for illuminating our understanding that we might have all of the necessary things operating in our lives. We thank you that we have studied to show ourselves approved workmen that need not to be ashamed, but may we rightly divide the word of truth on tonight. We thank you that it is your spirit that teaches us all things. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would do what you do best. Yes. Be the teacher of the church. We thank you that as we learn collectively, as we grow collectively, your kingdom is pushed 
forward yes. and we glorify you that you've given us all power over the power of the enemy so that nothing shall by any means hurt us we exercise dominion we pull down every stronghold every high thing every imagination we bring into captivity to the obedience of Christ and we just praise you in advance for this word falling on good ground producing 30 60 yes. and 100 fold yes. for you promised us that your word would not return unto you void but it must accomplish that which you set it out to do and so God our expectation is of you yes, our Lord. eyes are on you yes, we Lord. are looking to the hills from whence cometh our help yes, for our help comes from the Lord the Lord who made heaven and earth and so we praise you in advance for the victory we praise you in advance for understanding we praise you in advance for revelation and insight in your son Jesus name we pray amen and amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So um, I said Galatians 5, but we're going to start with Galatians 6. It's important that we, again, rehearse the foundation of what we've kind of been talking about. And I spent a whole lot of time on it, but just to kind of uh, springboard from this foundation of, of, again, the law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. So if you've never heard that term before, and if you've, never been, if, you've never, if you've been around the body of Christ, and you may have never been familiar with that term, the law of reciprocity, it is basically just a term that means whatever you put in, you can expect to get back out. Amen. So again, the law of reciprocity works when you're in the bank. If you don't put money in, don't don't get it twisted. Well, you ain't getting a whole bunch of whatever you put in the bank. <laughs> that's when what you, you throw your code in there. Come on now. That's what you're getting back out. Now, Amen. again, if you put more in there and you withdraw less, it's no problem because you got yeah. enough in there to go handle business. But if you're trying to get more out of the bank than what you put yeah. into there, come on, you're going to get that error message. Insufficient funds. And it's going <laughs> to it's gonna tell you insufficient funds. And that's what a lot of people are trying to do in the kingdom of God is they're trying to withdraw more out of their life than what they're putting into. And this is a wonderful thing because this transcends religion. It's a principle, as we talked about last week, an eternal or a universal principle mm -hmm. that works no matter who, who, you, it, are. who you are. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We just happen to be benefit benefactories of it because we're in the household of faith. Mm -hmm. But if you know, if you know the principle, what goes up must come down. Right. That's mm -hmm. basically the same principle. There mm -hmm. are people who believe in what is called karma. karma. Right. Mm -hmm. You've heard that term. Mm -hmm. What goes around. I mean, what goes, goes around, around comes around. around. Or what you do to somebody else, mm -hmm. it going to come back and get you. <laughs> what you've done to me already <laughs> been done to you. <laughs> color purple <laughs> so when it comes to you and I moving forward in this new thing that God is doing and repositioning ourselves we have to understand how valuable the principle of reciprocity is in our own lives mm -hmm. and how again it's not about religion it's truly about what it is what are you and I willing to invest in order to get the return that we want to see Amen. so Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and the scripture decrees and declares, um, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when you see that scripture in the Bible, he's, he's, Paul is explaining to the church at Galatian that, listen, whatever you put in your life, it's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. And we know that our lives are basically a product of of the thoughts that we have yeah really they're a product um let me just write let me just make sure our, our lives are a product of the previous paradigms that we've allowed to formulate in our lives mm -hmm. and also the dominant thinking patterns yes so again our lives are a product of our previous paradigms or how we have seen things mm -hmm. or taken in things or how we've allowed things to be sown into our minds that shapes the way we look at stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's also a product of our most dominant mm -hmm. thinking patterns. Amen. Right? Not not some not, you know, not small thinking patterns, but our dominant thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. Some of those small things that try to get in there and become 
dominant Dominant. thinking patterns. And we talked about how those dominant thinking patterns uh, outside of God's will erect uh, strongholds, Strongholds. Mm -hmm. right? And strongholds try to keep us bound or keep God out from us moving to the next level. So he says again, Galatians 6 and 7, here is the foundation of our agricultural life principles that whatever we sow into our life, that we can also expect to reap. Mm -hmm. And that's encouraging to many, and that's also... Also discouraging. Yeah, (laughs) it's also discouraging to many because there are people who want more out of life But they won't sow more into their life. But they haven't sown more. Or they haven't. Thank you, baby. Or they haven't sown. Or let's let's, let's, let's get off the uh, adversarial track and let's be positive about it. They just don't know what to To sow. sow. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how to sow. Mm -hmm. Or they don't know that they are sowing. Or they don't know that they are sowing. And so what, what God wants to do with us is share with Uh, the people of God, specifically at Real Life Christian Center, but for all of our, those that are chiming in, these four life agricultural principles that work for everybody. So we said the first agricultural principle uh, that we shared two weeks ago was that we must learn how to endure the winters. And we said symbolically, again, not harping on it, you can always go back, but the winters represent dry and dead seasons Mm -hmm. when things start to die die. or they, thank you, babe, appear to die. Mm -hmm. But we also recognize that the winters are necessary. Mm-hmm. Right, we can we can still thrive in the midst of what appears to be dying. Mm-hmm. Right, and then our second principle that we rolled around, I believe it was last week, is that you and I want to take full advantage of the spring times. Mm-hmm. And we know spring is a time really where you want to you want to plant your seed so you can sit back and expect a yeah. harvest. Spring is when the showers are happening. Spring is when the showers are happening. And I, I think when the ground is its most, most, most fertile. So when the ground is most fertile, that's when you really want to take advantage and plant that thing. Of the sowing. All right. Yeah. Because we, 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 we was encouraged through Jim Rome that you can either get good at planting in the spring or get good at begging, begging. in the fall. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And we don't want to continue to get good at begging. We want to be able to reap some things yeah. because we take, we've taken full advantage, advantage of, of our springs. But tonight, want to focus on the third agricultural principles. And that, again, is we must protect the crop in the summertime or we must protect our harvest the crop or or our crop in summer now we know summer represents heat summer represents when things start to try to the heat of life or the heat of situations or the heat of negative influences Mm -hmm. or the heat of, uh, or the, 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 the infectious bugs or the thing or the, the freaks that come out at night, so to speak. <laughs> I, baby, I had a bunch of freaks in her garden that came out at night and ate up her, ate up her stuff. Ate up my collard uh, greens. Ate up them collard greens. Because sometimes the freaks come out at night. <laughs> right, 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 right. But we have to learn and God wants us to be encouraged to protect this, our crops. In the in the summertime, mm-hmm. I think there was a, a there was a, a, a an advertisement way back uh, with Under Armour that says we must protect this house. house this house, right? <laughs> so again, you and I, once we plant a seed of faith, we don't want that seed of faith or whatever it is to be plucked up mm-hmm. with doubt, yeah, yeah, or plucked up in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got to learn how to protect it the through the summer time. So with that said and done, go to Galatians, back to Galatians chapter 5. All right. Galatians chapter 5, Paul again is talking to the young believers who began on their journey of faith, but somehow uh, they got disrupted. Somehow <laughs> they kind of got a little laxed in it. Ooh. And somehow they thought, you know what, it's all good. I don't need to go out there and water no garden. I don't need to go out there and read no Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go out there and pray. I don't need to go to church. I mean, they probably didn't sound like that. Right. Right. 
But the reality is they were on a specific track and then somehow they were influenced mm -hmm. and gotten off track. Galatians chapter 5, looking at verse 7. Looking at verse 7. Now we're going to jump back to verse 1, but I'm going to start at verse 7. Paul says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Well, for this persuasion, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, and I'll read from the New Living here in a minute. Uh, verse 7, you ran well. Mm -hmm. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Now, that's a great question. Right, 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 right. Because when you and I learn to ask critical questions of ourselves, mm -hmm. what's hindering me from moving forward? Mm -hmm. What's hindering me from going to the next, next level? level. Yeah. I mean, what's really hindering me from obeying the truth that I know that is the law of reciprocity. Right, right, right. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And so Paul says, he goes on in verse 8, this persuasion, look at what Paul uses, this persuasion or influence does not come from him or God who, watch this, calls you. Ooh. So anything that is persuading you and I from moving forward oh, in the good. things of God, Paul has already decreed and declared, that this ain't coming, coming from, from God. God. So we don't have to we don't have to uh, tippy toe around the fact yeah, yeah, that yeah. again that there's going to always be something that's going to try to prevent you and I from moving to the next level. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Paul says this in the book of Romans, and you don't have to go there, but it's there in Romans seven. He says, and I, but I see another or a member warring against the members of my mind uh -huh, uh -huh. and trying to bring me into captivity, captivity. or mm -hmm. obedience or in other words try to hold me back yes. from moving forward yes and yes. paul is letting us know that again this persuasion or this influence mm -hmm. is not coming, coming from, from god. god so watch this if it's not coming from god where, where is, is god it coming from, from? Mm -hmm. I'll let you think about that. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not careful, the enemy himself would cause us to believe yeah. that we don't have to be intentional about the pursuit of God, that we can sit back and just let things happen. Right. And watch this. That, that, is a, that is one of the uh, schemes mm -hmm. and tricks, or thank you, babe, the <laughs> devices of the enemy. Right. To watch this cause us to be tripped up or stagnant mm -hmm. from moving to the next level. Well, Paul is already letting the, the young church know, man, man, who, 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 where you get that from? Who, who talking? Who talking to you? Where you get that at? Who, matter of fact, it reminds me of even when God was dealing with Adam, Adam and Eve. And Eve right. And God says, you know what? This is what I need y'all to do. Mm -hmm. I, I done already laid down the law. But then God come back and check on his children. I'm getting real country, but he checked on his children, and, and and then they they talking different. Mm -hmm. They watch this. They dress different. <laughs> they trying to cover up their sin. Don't they shout me down. They, they hide, hide it, it, putting it under. Mm -hmm. And God said, "Well, what's it? well, we hid from you, God, because we was naked." And I love what God said. God said, "What? Well, wait a minute. Who, who 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 talking to you? Who told you that? In other words, what persuasion have you been get? Are you getting?" <laughs> To keep you from obeying my truth. Yeah. Yeah. Is not my truth good enough for you to be set free and move Ooh. forward? Amen. Oh, Amen. my goodness. Amen. So God wants, he's reminding us tonight, and Paul is encouraging the people of God, and you can see why he's saying, you guys got to protect this crowd. Yeah. You got to protect what has been sown into you spiritually Hallelujah. because the enemy will cause doubt, fear, and, and unbelief, unbelief to creep in yeah, yeah, yeah. and watch this abort, yeah. abort, or become the abortion clinic yeah. of your up. dreams and your desires. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we've got to protect the crop. Right. And the responsibility is on us to protect the crop, right? God's responsibility is what he put in the seed. Come on. 
Come what's on, baby. in the seed on, is already designed to produce. The Come word on, that God has deposited in our lives is already designed to produce. Come that on. cannot Ooh. return to God void. Say that but again. It's, it's already us. designed to it's produce. It's already designed to produce. Mm. We don't have to do anything to the seed mm. of the word of God in order for the seed to be fruitful. So you mean automatically when we get it in us, God is like, you know what? I know what my word going to do. It, 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 it is that old adage. I think it was Sister Nett said it a couple of weeks ago. We don't know how many uh, uh, seeds. We can know how many seeds are in an apple, but we'll never know how many apples are in the seed. Come right? On. The seed is already designed to produce. And mm, so mm, it is mm. up to us in the summer to protect the crop. Where the responsibility comes in is now we have received the seed of God's word into our heart. It has been planted in our hearts. Or in other words, what the scripture says, it's been engrafted, right? The seed of God's word has been engrafted into our hearts. And now it's up to us as that seed is producing. And here's what I want to say to you. How many of you can attest That the devil always leave you alone when you ain't doing nothing. Always leave. When I don't want to be bothered with God, when I'm not trying to read my Bible, when I'm not trying to pray, when I'm not trying to be about my father's business, he ain't got nothing to say to me. He leave me alone. Right? It's only when the seed starts to produce a crop Mm. that now all of a sudden the devil shows up trying to hinder that the seed of God's word. So it's up to us. The responsibility is on us to protect the crops. The responsibility is not on us to make the seed produce anything. I love that, baby, because you're right. The seed... When God produced it, his word or his promise or whatever he placed in, in the our, soil of our heart, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. we're yeah, like yeah. that, the, the parable of the seed in the soil, mm-hmm. right? Where the seed is the word of God placed in the hearts of men. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, some hearts were uh, hard mm-hmm. and the enemy came by and immediately took the seed. Took immediately. The seed. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, some seed was shallow. Some, some it parts were shallow. Shallow, and it didn't get root. So, again, when hard, I'm great group, get group. <laughs> get root. I'm group. Take root. Or take root. <laughs> Thank you, babe. When the seed wasn't allowed to take root mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. of the the heat in the summer, it was immediately, the, the, the it immediately withered. Withered. Yeah. And then, of course, we know that some seed was choked out Mm -hmm. because the hearts of people were too concerned about everything everything around them as as opposed to what God is doing. But I love that you threw that out there, baby, because you are absolutely right. God already pre-designated and knew what his word was going to do in you and me. Watch this. When we received his word and engrafted it into our soul. Yes. And the enemy gets upset, upset because we take this thought or this word and we begin to anachronize our, our lives or we begin to cause a, parado- a paradoxical a intention, intention. Yes. to pursue something different. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. it's just like a mugger. And I'm so glad you said that because a mugger don't go after nobody who ain't got Jack. Right. I know that's probably not good English, but a mugger ain't trying to attack nobody who ain't got nothing. Yeah. Why does a mugger attack somebody? Because they they, like they perceive that what the person has has some value. That's why the enemy, the Bible says in John 10 and 10, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and, and to destroy. destroy. Why? Because he knows that when you and I receive God's word or that seed, that he knows there's, a, there's going to be a crop. Yeah. There's going to be a harvest that is going to be produced if the people of God don't faint. Right, 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 if right, the right. people of God are slowly but surely, steady but strong, keeping on God, there's going to be a crop. There's going to be a harvest. Watch this, that they can testify. And according to Revelations, it's this testimony that will Ooh. cause them to overpower the enemy. Yes. It's their willingness to say, I went through a little something, something, something. something but I was rooted. I was watered. I yes. was fertilized. Hallelujah. But I kept on growing in the no, things of God. Right. You know why? Because I wasn't letting no joker hinder me or persuade me from yes. moving forward. Yes. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So when it comes to this third life agricultural principle, now we know three is a number of transition. Mm -hmm. Well, we get ready, we get set, and we go. Uh, you know, it is, it is necessary to understand that when we get this two in, in, in place, um, we are on our way to where God wants us to be. The devil gets mad when you and I make up in our sanctified mind that we're going to transition or follow God in this transition, that we are going to be determined to be better than what we was last week. Yes, yes. That we are not going to let doubt, fear, and, and oh, unbelief God. set up a, uh, an abortion clinic in our mind mm -hmm. to abort the dreams that God has had for us. Yeah. And watch this. That persuasion, if you are not careful, can come from outside and, and within. Inside, yeah. Yeah. So Paul is saying, I need you to protect this house. I need what house is he talking about? Right here. Right here. Right, right here. here. Right, write this down for the sake of time. Proverbs 23 and 7. Scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so, so is, is he. he. So if the enemy can get you to think you can't move forward or you to think that you don't have to be intentional mm -hmm. about taking care of your crop, mm -hmm. right? Then he, that's half the battle won. Yeah, because you won't do anything, and you'll kick back, and uh, and you'll you'll you you'll basically <laughs> you'll basically suffer. <laughs> your crops will be destroyed. And you and yeah, and your crops will be destroyed. And we and God doesn't want that for any of us. So um, I'm gonna. We said last week that again, or the last couple of weeks, that God gave us two powerful things to think about, and that is life is like the changing seasons. Remember that. Life is like the changing seasons, and we know that there's four seasons, and those seasons will always come and go. They are cyclical. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? Yeah. They are cyclical, so we can count on those seasons to come. So we know that after winter comes what? Spring, spring. and then after spring comes what? Summer. summer, and then after summer comes what? Fall. So even after good Down times. After health comes sickness. After sickness comes health. Mm -hmm. I mean, after day comes night. After day comes mm -hmm. night. We can count on that. Mm -hmm. So God is saying we don't we don't have to uh, pray that winter doesn't come. It's coming. It's coming. Right? Or we don't have to, in a sense, uh, pray that hard times never come. No, they're coming. They're coming. Matter of fact, James 1, um, 1 and 2, you can write this down, mm -hmm. but James 1 and 2, he reminds us when hard times come, count these things a sheer gift. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah, don't yeah. try to get out of things prematurely because God is trying to teach us something. Amen. And what does God want to do? He wants to make sure that when we get that seed in us, and we trust that God has something great in store for us that we do everything we can to protect this house. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? That's all right. Go with me to Second Corinthians. I mean, Second Corinthians. Um, Second Corinthians. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, not yet. Second Corinthians. <laughs> I said uh, Galatians chapter five, verse one. I need you to see this, and then we'll jump over to Second Corinthians uh, chapter chapter ten. But Galatians. 5 and 1, um, Lord have mercy, I'm all over the place, but I want to oh, stay, in, stay in Galatians 5 and 1, but I'm going to read Galatians, what we just read, 7 through 10 in the New Living Translation of the Bible. Buckle your seatbelts. All right. Paul says, you are getting along so well. Who has interfered with you and held you back from following the truth. Mm -hmm. Many of us have accomplished a lot of some spiritual development to be accomplished in our life just in this beginning of the year by us being able to uh, uh, hunker uh, down. down and mm -hmm. isolate ourselves with God. Mm -hmm. And if we are not careful, the enemy will come and rob everything that has been sown yeah, yeah. into our life because he doesn't want us to walk in the new normal or the new thing that God has already begun. Amen. So Paul is saying, man, who came, who came at you and who hindered you from and held you back all right, from following the truth? I love this. Verse 8, he says, it certainly isn't God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. Hmm. I love that. But it takes only, verse 9, it takes only one wrong person among you to infect all the others. A little yeast spreads quickly through the whole bunch. So Paul said, it don't take a whole lot to infect you. It could take one person. 
You and I have to be cognizant that we are protecting the truth and the freedoms that God has given us, the liberation that he's given us to walk in this truth. And who's the only one that really doesn't want us to walk in this truth? A thief that wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. So Paul is saying, look, uh, he says, it only takes one person to do this. But look, verse 10, he says, I am trusting the Lord to bring you back to believing as you do about these things. And God will judge that person, whoever he is, that has been troubling or confusing you. Well, so we ain't got to worry about the individual. Again, we trust that whatever God has sown into us, he's uh, he's going to do what he's going to do. Yep, he's going to do what he said. Right? That's why he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I have plans for you, plans of good and not, not evil, evil, to bring you into what? An expected end. So when I put my word in you and it's not going to come back void, God says just protect that word. Hold on yes. to the seed, seed of that of word. word. Roll Hallelujah. that thing around in your mind. Yes. Remind yourself, yourself of what God said to you uh, in the beginning, so to speak, so that you don't start talking crazy. crazy. You don't start talking like those who don't believe. You, yes. start, you start talking like God and watch this. You begin to receive and align yourself with what he wants. You, 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 you get in formation. <laughs> Okay, lady. And you show God you got some coordination <laughs> that you can walk and talk like him at the same time. Yes, yes. Right? So, again, no, I don't really have any deep revelation for you <laughs> tonight. Don't need no deep revelation. Because I truly believe <laughs> that understanding the value or the necessity to protect our thoughts yeah. and our thought patterns and our hearts from allowing them to be contaminated with doubt, fear, and unbelief will abort the dreams that God has for you and I it and uproot, mm -hmm. thank you, baby, the dreams that God has had for all of us. So in, in Galatians 5 and 1, he says, So stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made you free. Not us. We don't make ourselves free. No. The word makes us free. Mm -hmm. God's word makes us free. I'm not coming. I'm not trying to cling to some some good slogans. No, 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 no. Give me the word of God because slogans will come and go. Let If it ain't lining up with the word of God, I've got to protect this house. I've got to cast down every high thing and imagination and bring it into what? Captivity into the obedience of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's again Second Corinthians chapter four, uh, five, and I mean chapter ten, verse four and five. Don't really have time to turn there because we're just time. rolling, all right. But God wants us. This is how we protect mm -hmm. our crops. This is how we guard that which has been committed to our trust. trust. Amen. Is that we don't allow thoughts, thought patterns to develop that are outside of God's will for our lives. To keep us from following the truth. Amen. That's applicable to wherever you are in this arena of faith. You could be a new believer. Yeah, and when yeah, God yeah. tells you that you are a new person in Christ, that old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. And you don't shout it in church and you going <laughs> home and you feeling good. Don't you let some devil try to make you think that you are not because you've, you've got some baggage that you got to release. Amen. Amen. That's a trick from the, from enemy, the enemy to keep you from moving Move forward. forward. The, the, the thing that is so oh, powerful about summer is this that it we talked about this a little bit before yes, but it is the heat energy from the sun mm. that allows the seed to produce the fruit so in order for the seed to grow there has to be heat energy from the sun come on baby. at the same time we have to protect the crops from the sun we can't shield the crops from the sun right. because if you put we I did this one year one year in my garden 
I was trying to keep the birds out of the garden. You remember that? Mm. And I made that uh, cover and the hail. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, trying yeah. to keep the birds uh, yeah. and the hail out right. of the garden. Right. And I made that cover out of, out of the screen mm -hmm. because I was like, well, it's screen, so the light will still get through, the water will get through, the birds won't be able to get through, but then the hail won't be able to get through. Come on. The problem is everything in my garden, it did continue to grow, but it was small it continued to grow but it was small it didn't die off Come on. but it was small Come on. many of us in our walk of faith have been doing too much hiding from the sun Come on. we're trying to shield ourselves from the sun from the heat mm -hmm. of the problems we're still growing we're not quite dying mm -hmm. but we're not as strong as we could be yeah. see the counterbalance to the heat from the sun is not shade mm -hmm. you don't give the plant shade to protect it the counterbalance from the heat from the sun is water mm. what is water the word of god you mean you mean to tell me that you don't want to you don't want to shade you know, when the shade talks about people always want it easy or cool. We don't always just want the shade you, of you, life. You cannot expect fruit-bearing wow. crops. Wow. Fruit-bearing crops mm. need the heat from the sun. Our intuition, when we are under the heat, when we're going through the thick of it, our intuition is to go for the shade. Come on. When what God wants us to do is not run to the shade, but run to the water of his word. And so the hotter it is getting, the more word I need. Mm. The hotter it is getting, the more word I need. Come on. The more difficult I'm finding it, the more word I need. Come on. When we get that pattern going, mm. then what we understand That's is good. I need this heat. That's good. This heat is making me grow. That's this good. heat is making me produce. This heat is making me develop. If I go through this heat, I will have fruit that someone else can partake of. If I don't go through the heat, I'm not going to be able to bear fruit or I'm going to bear a little bit of fruit. Mm. It won't be enough. And so what we tend to do as believers is we get it twisted. Mm -hmm. When the heat is on, mm -hmm. we tend to hide. Come on. Come on. When the heat is on, when we're in the thick of it, we that's when we pull away from God. Mm -hmm. And what God is saying is in the thick of it, that's when we pull away from church. Mm -hmm. That's when we pull away from other believers. Mm -hmm. That's when we don't want to talk to nobody. Mm -hmm. We just going to hide in our room mm -hmm. and get say, man, somebody Hallelujah. get up under the covers Hallelujah. and just be in our misery all by ourselves. And sometimes we need to be by ourselves. But if we're by ourselves, we need to be getting the water of this word. Mm. We what we find what what I have found say it, say it. in my own garden say outside right. is that it is the heat of the sun that also produces the most pests. Mm. I don't have no problems with the pincher bugs eating up my collard greens in the spring. It is not until the heat is on that now I got an infestation of the pincher book. So what am I saying to you? In the same way, in the same way that you have to protect yourself from the heat of the sun, it is because, it is only because you are producing fruit that the pests are showing up in your life. Haters don't hate on people that ain't doing nothing. So when people are coming at you and coming against you and bad mouthing you and you're having difficult time with pests, know that that is a part of the summer season. Your job is to protect the crops. One thing I learned to do this year uh -huh. that is I learned it a little bit too on, late, but on. I'm gonna remember for, remember it for next year, and it's working for my sunflowers, brother Drew. <laughs> my sunflowers are working. I learned this year that what you can do when you have an infestation of pincher bugs and any other bugs for that matter is you can put some Vaseline around the bottom of the stem. Mm, that's nice. You can put some oil. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Some Get some stem, oil baby. around the bottom of the stem, and what happens is the <laughs> pests can't and won't walk 
through the Vaseline. You mean they'll be formed, but they, they won't they, come. They, wa- they will not walk through it. So unless it is a flying pest, come say on. amen, somebody. And we got you, we got some stuff for them, too. And we got some stuff for them, too. But unless it is a flying pest, then you can just let the anointing of God deal with the pest in your life. When the anointing is on your life, the anointing will deal with the pest. You don't have to spend any energy or any time trying to go in there and deal with the pest yourself. You mean you who, can just whoever let is. the anointing Ooh, deal with them. The reason the pest has shown up is because you got a good crop. See, the pests don't show up when you don't have a good crop. Go ahead, As my grandfather ahead, used to ahead, say, God ahead, rest his go soul. Ahead, Grandpa ahead, Bob used to ahead. always tell me when I was a little girl cleaning collard greens with him and cleaning vegetables with him whenever we found a worm or whenever we found a bug while we were cleaning the vegetables grandpa bob would always tell me because i would get afraid i would be like oh god there's bugs in here grandpa bob would always tell me baby girl the only reason there are bugs on these greens is because the greens are good that's how you know it's good because there's pests showing up. So I'm saying that to encourage you out there in Facebook land on today. The reason the pests are showing up is because your crop is good. Your harvest is going to be right. Don't get discouraged because the pests are showing up. Don't hide from the sun. Say amen somebody. Don't try to shield yourself but allow the anointing of God to deal with the pests that are in your lives because I promise you there ain't no pit bugs eating up <laughs> no horrible collard greens. They're only eating the tender ones. They're only oh, eating the good it. ones. And so when oh, they goodness. show up, that's why Go what ahead. you quoted in James is so powerful. That's why we can rejoice. That's right. That's why we can count it all that's joy. Your gift. Count it all joy when you enter into diverse trials. Troubles on every side. When you have all of these challenges, right. it is a sign to you that the seed of God's word is doing exactly what God commissioned for it to do. If the seed is not producing anything, you won't have these problems. But because you're having these problems, because tribulation is coming, difficulty is coming, because you're fighting off things in your body, Mm. fighting off things in your mind, fighting off things in relationships, fighting off things in your finances, because you're fighting, that's the sign to you that God God is doing exactly what he promised you he would do when you were in your midnight hour all by yourself and you were crying out to God and God spoke a word to you God is coming to tell you today that his word will accomplish what he set it out to do Mm. don't take it as a sign that you should quit don't take it as a sign that you should give up don't take it as a sign that you should throw in the towel but like you said when we started dig your faith flag in deep Stake it in the ground and say, devil, I'm not turning back. I know God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And I'm not wasting no time on these little bitty pests in my life. I'm going to let the anointing of God deal with them. And he will. Amen. Girl, that's good. Y'all better, yeah, come on now. I know, I know y'all shouting out in the Facebook land. Man, that's some anointing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, put some anointing on the stem of your life. Mm. All right, the mm. devil doesn't, he doesn't come after folks who ain't doing, doing nothing. nothing. The, I, I think the old folks used to say, you know, if, if, if the devil ain't bothering you, it's because you ain't doing, doing nothing. nothing, right? But it's because you and I are moving forward. It's because we've made up in our mind that we are going to capitalize yeah, 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 yeah. and realign ourselves yeah. up with what God has for us in the year 2020 and beyond. And we are going to fall in line it, because we decided to make up our yeah. and, and our sanctified mind to not walk yes. in the, the soulless realm, but that we're walking in the faith the realm spirit. and the yes. spirit realm. The devil starts to shudder. Yeah. And he tries to throw all devices in there to try to shut us down. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says, don't let n- this persuasion that anytime you are are shrinking backwards Back. Woo. from obeying the truth of God, I don't care what it is. It's not a persuasion 
from God. God. God never told Moses and the people, yeah, y'all go ahead, since it's hard, go ahead and go back to Egypt. Go ahead. You know, I understand how you feel, so go ahead and go back. No. Mm. God mm. said, go forward. Yeah. It reminds me, and we know that the, 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 the waters spread forward when they started to move forward, but it reminds me of the book uh, Joel Osteen has, Becoming a Better You. He talks mm. about how he enter into this big massive building and these they had two sets of doors automatic doors but before he could go through the second door he had to go through the first door and allow that first door to close before the the next second one open and some of us are trying to open up new chapters and God is trying to allow us to close some of those old, old chapters, chapters. Woo. But watch this. While that old chapter is closing, our minds is being renewed in the middle, middle. of it. Yes. It's being renewed in the middle of it. Hallelujah. And once that, that old way closes, that old you closes, that old habit closes, that come old on. fear closes, come on, come and on. you see it close behind you, you're, for, you're not going to remember those things that's behind you, but you're going to be like Paul. I'm forgetting that last door. I'm pressing forward. I'm moving to the next one. And things start to happen. Doors start to fly open. But guess what? There is an enemy that don't want you to make that first step. Hmm. Because he wants to place doubt. Fear and unbelief and abort your dreams. But we are we got the anointing on the stem of our lives. Hallelujah. You have the anointing of God on the stem of your life so that you can protect the crop or the seed of God's word Hallelujah. from the from the devouring power of the enemy. Amen. How do we do that? I'm glad you asked. We gotta shut this thing down. <laughs> oh my goodness. How do you do that? Four things. You have to get the right protection. Shoot. You have to have the right protection. Right protection. Right? Mm -hmm. We have to have the right principles. Mm -hmm. We got to get around the right people. people. And you got to get the right perspective. You and I have to understand that when, when we are moving forward, if the enemy can cloud the way we see it from the people that we hang around, mm -hmm. from receiving wrong principles, watch this, it messes with our doggone, it messes with the protection of God, and then we are outside of God's protection because we won't pull thoughts down into the obedience of Christ. Mm. And when you and I are susceptible to the onslaughts of the enemy, it's because we left the protection of God or we we've, we've uncovered the seed that God has placed in us through doubt, through fear, through people, through negative negativity, through cir even circumstances can try to remove the protection of God. We got to have the right protection. And I love what you said. The right protection doesn't mean that we shield our crop from all the sun. No, I need the right amount of sun. Yeah. I need, a, I, God, I need the right amount of sun. I'm not going to be so superly religious that I don't forget about who I'm supposed to be. Give me the right amount of sun. Give me the right amount of word. God, un, help me to understand I need the right amount of fertilization or bad and good that happens in my crop. But make sure that I'm, I'm building and I'm growing my life. Yeah. Based off of the book. Based upon the right principles. Mm-hmm. Paul said, who hindered you from obeying the truth? Yeah. yeah. That persuasion didn't come from God. You got a hold of some crazy thinking. You got a hold of some crazy philosophy that made you think that either you was God or the situation was God. Mm -hmm. And God said, no, 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 no. My ways are higher. higher some you. stuff you and I might not always understand. But what we do know is that when we are perplexed, we are not in despair. Amen. We may not know what to do, but our eyes will be on the word. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we must protect the crop in the summertime. Amen. We've got to learn that if we get the right protection, and that's God and his word. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of God. That's the seal of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the protection. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It tells you 
man, you got this truth. You got to protect it. You got to protect it. Yeah. God speaks a word to you, whether you go to a physical church, whether you're watching it on the screen of somebody, an evangelist, or you're listening to uh, the birds chirping. And God speaks to you, you know, because God, everything in, le in life is a lesson. Amen. So we don't eliminate nothing <laughs> from God teaching us. But when God drops it in your spirit, the spirit is what's protecting that seed. And you are, you and I are cooperating with God for that correct principles. Yeah. And watch this. If we're not careful, we get around the wrong people. people. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying look down your nose at folks, but even, even this year, you have got to be cognizant of the type of people, people. that you hang around or allow to drop seeds in your mind. Mm -hmm. Or uproot seeds. Or uproot those seeds. You know, it don't take all that. No, it might not take all that for you. you. Do you, boo? Right. But you have you and I have to be careful mm -hmm. because the people that God uh, wants us to be around are the people that are our faith field that are fueling the faith system of yeah, our yeah, lives. Yeah. And watch this. There is a, a little alarm that goes off in your spirit mm -hmm. to let you know, uh oh, they're <laughs> trying to uproot that truth. <laughs> You don't have to, you don't have uh, you don't have to have some magical potion waved over you. You don't have to be you don't have to you don't have to pray some special prayer for you to get some great deep interpretation to know that God is speaking to you about an area in your life that he wants to develop. Yes. And when you get that truth that's beginning to set you free. When the in, you know the in, you know when the enemy is trying to bring you back in that yoke of bondage. Mhm. Mm you know when the enemy is trying to make it. And he'll try to even tell you, I remember when you did what? Thus and thus. And if you're not careful, you'll talk yourself out of moving forward. Mm -hmm. Because you'll, you'll say to yourself, you know what? Yeah, I did some I bad things. To. And I man, I can never see myself going better. No, I can never see myself growing. That is straight from the pit of okay. hell. God uses everything. Yeah. in our lives as fertilization to produce the greatness that he has for us. Mm -hmm. So when you get even discouraged in that, look at look at Paul, he was a murderer. <laughs> look at look at David, that boy was an adulterer. <laughs> look at Peter, and that a boy, murderer. That, look at Peter, that boy ran off at the mizzle. <laughs> Snoop, he ran off at the mouth. Tried to murder people. Okay? I mean, come on now. You know, look at look at all of our our biblical heroes in the Bible. All, all of them, them, all of them, had went through something. But what we have to understand, champion, is that as we move forward through the liberty and the grace that God has given us for this year, 2020, and as we begin to grab a hold of His divine promises and fall in line. Uh, that there's going to be an enemy that's going to try to rob us of the crop or the harvest that's been sown into our yeah. spirit. Yeah. You and I have to protect that. How do we do it? Proper protection. Mm -hmm. I like the word of God says, get the helmet of salvation in Ephesians 6. Get the helmet of salvation to I protect like your mind. Right? Get the shield of faith. That's proper protection. Mm -hmm. You may not know what to do, but my faith will speak for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to protect myself from the fiery yeah, darts of God. the enemy. I believe God. You know what? I don't know where his word says it, but I believe God. <laughs> I believe God. God you know, got I don't know what book of the Bible <laughs> is, but I know, the, I know my God is bigger than the devil. <laughs> Right, right. I, I don't know. Watch it. I don't know how I'm gonna come out of this, but I know God gonna bring I'm me coming out. Coming out. And if I, if I, if I can't see it for myself, I look around at some of the folks that God has delivered, yeah. and I say, you know what? If you God can, can do, do it, it for them, them surely, surely He can, can do, do it, it for me. me. You look at Pastor T. If God can do right. it for this old knucklehead boy, surely He can do it for you. Right. I right. go to the head of the class. Absolutely. Because I ain't had it all together. I haven't always crossed all my I's and dotted all my T's. I have to think about that. Crossed all your T's. Yeah, there you go. And see, dotted see, all your I, I's. you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I know what God has for me. Mm -hmm. So, like Paul, I'm forgetting the things. I'm not latched. I'm not. I'm not hitching my wagon to my past. Yeah. I'm not going to let I'm not going to let the dreams that God has given me to be aborted through the abortion clinic of doubt, fear and unbelief. No, I'm going to move forward. Even if the door is closed, I'm going to make that first step. Right, 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 right. Why? Right. Because I got to protect the seed. I got to protect what God has said. And that's what God, you, God wants you and I to do. Have the proper protection. Mm -hmm. Build your life off the proper principles of God. And they're all here. 
<laughs> They're all here, right? Once you build your life off the proper principles, check your surroundings, the people. Yeah. Because Paul, God says, I'll deal with those folks that won't, that won't, that, that don't want you to move to the next level. You just do what I told, I told you to you do. do. Because they're going, like you said, there are going to be some folks that hate on you just because you're making that next step. So what? Let them hate. Yeah. And then afterward, you'll be telling me, you know what? Thank you for all. That. I appreciate that. I really mm -hmm. do. Because it was that dirt that caused me to scramble it down and put it under my feet. <laughs> right? So again, you got the right principles. Mm -hmm. And you're applying those it's right principles. Doing it. Right? You're not being lazy about applying those principles. Just write this down for the sake of time. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 10, I believe it's verse 18. Ecclesiastes 10 and 18. He says that the lazy person allows the roof to leak. Right? And, 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 the, and, 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 and to grow rotting. Mm. So God doesn't want, he doesn't want our lives to grow rotting or to begin to leak and allow the enemy to drench our lives with all kind of craziness because we won't sow or we don't know what to sow or we don't know how to sow. That's why God gives us shepherds. Yeah, I was going to say uh, even along that point of protection that that's why you have to have shepherds. Come on. Right? That's part of why. I know don't nobody like to hear that nowadays. We don't like to talk about that's why you need to be in a church up under, no church up under some shepherds. That's why you need spiritual leaders in your life that your life is submitted to because the Bible says it is the shepherd that watches out for your soul. And so it's essential that as believers we get connected not to a church, but we get connected to a shepherd that is watching out for our soul. That's part of the protection. That is the word that you need. That is the prayer covering that yes, you need. Yes. That is the intercession that you need in order to keep you protected so that you can keep your crops secure. Amen. So often when we are... Um, um, blooming and blossoming that's the very time that God begins or the devil begins to target us to cause us to get uprooted from where we were planted say amen somebody so that we can be out there by ourselves I always use the analogy because it is a great analogy right. and I'm going to use it again if you take a plant any plant and you keep Digging it up and replanting it and digging it up and replanting it mm. and digging it up and mm. replanting mm. it and digging it up and replanting it. Any plant that you do that to will die. The stress of moving from location to location. Even I had to one year get on pastor because he was moving my plants in the house. Get the whoop me. Talking whoop about, me. I didn't whoop you. Don't I mean, be on TV telling well, me. Well, not whoop me, whoop me, whoop me. She didn't have to whoop me. Pastor, they're beating on his husband. No, that wasn't happening. She wasn't beating on me. But, <laughs> but y'all pray for me, though. You know, okay, okay. Ah! <laughs> I'm so messing There it is. But I had to get on him because he thought he was helping. Yes. He kept moving the plants yes. from where I had them, putting them out on the front porch, mm. talking about they needed sun and they needed fresh air. Mm. And I was like, you can't move the plant from mm. location to location. You're stressing my plant out. You're killing my plant. And I so, thought I was doing good and so I, in my ignorance. I said but, all of that just to make the point that we need to be mindful to listen to what yes. the Holy Spirit is yes. saying. Yes. The Spirit is leading us. The Spirit is directing us. Yes. The Spirit is teaching us. The Spirit is guiding us. And the Spirit is going to guide you to where your protection is. Hallelujah. Because every church is not for everybody. Yeah. Say amen. 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 Every pastor, every shepherd is not for everybody. Amen. 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 And sometimes we're with shepherds just for a season. That's right. Right? That's right. But, That's right. So I'm not saying to, for anybody to come to, under condemnation. Uh -huh. But I am saying that part of your divine protection is in the assignment where God has called you to mature and grow. Hallelujah. And that's up under your shepherd. So, you know, we've, we've spent some great time with you guys tonight. 
I really pray that you got some great nuggets of truth and wisdom that you can roll around in your own spirit as you continually flow uh, in this anachronesis, as you begin to continually realign and reposition yourself yeah. for what God has for you, as you again achieve and want to achieve the things that God has placed on the inside of you, no matter where you are on the spectrum of your faith, again, as long as you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, God can work with you and accomplish through you great and awesome things. But we got to have the right protection. We got to have the right, build our life off the right principles. Yeah. All right. They found in God's word. All right. You can be sure that God is speaking through his words. You got to, you got to, and I know that people don't like that, but you have to be cognizant of the surroundings of the people that you place or you allow to be placed in your life because Amen. people bring thoughts. And this persuasion cannot, this persuasion can have a, an, an effect on our lives that causes us to err on the side of wrong instead of the side of truth. And more importantly, because this is the 20, year of 2020, the year of divine perception, you and I have to have the proper perspective of some things. Yeah. We can't continue to look at our lives or the situation that we're in or the crisis uh, with a negative lens because we will always respond in a negative light. And again, that does not go without saying that many of us have troubles and situations and circumstances that seem crazy and that seem insurmountable. But I'm telling you that when you and I learn to look at, look at situations through the lens of God, he provides hope, he provides answers, he provides references, he provides assistance and support to keep you and I moving to the next level so that as one, one door closes in our life and we are in that waiting period, we move forward. Yeah. We step forward, trusting that God is going to open up new horizons, new places, so that you and I can become a better you and we can become a better us. But it takes us to protect this house. Yeah. To protect this house. And when we do that, you and I can sit back and like Paul says, we can again begin to reap uh, in due season because we fainted Faint not. not. Amen. If this message was a blessing to you, if this was encouraging to you, if this was challenging to you, uh, we would love to hear from you. We'd love yeah. to hear how this particular third principle of this agricultural principle has blessed you, you know, again understanding that it's not always easy to protect the crops in the summer. But what are some of the techniques that you use? What are some of the things that you may use to protect your spiritual crop? I mean, we don't know it all. You know, we may be able to gleam off of what God has spoken to you. Share with us so that we can, again, share with those who are, are listening. Now, we don't want no crazy stuff. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the thoughts that we are projecting are the thoughts that God has already put on this earth. We don't want to sow seeds of doubt. We don't want to sow seeds of unbelief. And we definitely don't want to perpetuate fear in anybody's life. Amen. So we're going to take some time. We're going to look at you guys' comments. We're going to comment upon those. And then we're going to close out in prayer uh, as we leave tonight. Amen. 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 Uh, hallelujah. Let's see. Woo. <laughs> Lots of April showers bring May flowers. <laughs> April showers bring May flowers. Hey, Yolanda. <laughs> yeah, Yolanda who? Yolanda Mills Brown. Hey. <laughs> Tessa said, we water in daily. That's what we need. Amen. Jael said, there will always be something trying to disrupt what is budding in our faith. Amen. Mary, I said, if it's blocking God, it ain't for you. Step away, hunty. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Tonette said, the most cunning tactic Satan uses the, the tactic of making us think he doesn't exist. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Uh, let me see. Oh, hi, Marcy. Sister Tissa's friend, Marcy. Jael said, yes, OMG. God said, what is hindering you from what I said? What's hindering you? 
That's a, and that's a great question. What is hindering you from what God has said? You know, and, I, and on that note, I'm sure, but when we learn to really pose critical questions, those are really what moves us forward, too, in yeah. our faith. So don't be afraid to pose questions to yourself. Yeah. Because those you can really roll those around and go, hmm, what really is hindering me? What really is blocking me? You know, again, until we face it, we can't trace, trace it, it and erase, erase it, it. And, and place it on the altar mm -hmm. and then, and replace, then it. replace it, yeah. right? So don't we're not afraid to face whatever it is so that we can go, wait a minute. What is this? What is this? It's and then and then I'm, then we can we can we can we can um, uh, we can say, is this really from God mm -hmm. or really is not? Because yeah. remember, anything that's keeping us from moving forward in yeah, the kingdom yeah. business. Yes, yes. We yes. don't have to have a deep revelation. He just showed us mm -hmm. is not coming from God. And that, and I'm going to let you go, uh, I mean, let you comment, but that's the duality of life, right? Mm -hmm. So either you're intentionally pursuing uh, your your future mm -hmm. or you're the, by default going to be stuck in your past. Amen, amen. That's good. So uh, ask yourself questions. Uh, Jael said, <laughs> no, Mary, I said, What's in the seed is already designed to produce. I Amen. Love that. love that. Jael said, it's not my job to produce the crop out of the seed. It's my job to protect the seed. I think I get tripped up because I spend so much energy trying to produce the seed versus spending the energy protecting and preserving the seed. Amen. Exactly. That's so good. That is exactly what's happening. Trying to preserve it and just let it do what it do. That's, I mean, I gotta, I gotta let Say it do what it do. Made me think about Drew, mm. little little four year old Drew with the sunflower seeds that he stole from his nanny. Oh my! Found some holes. Oh my! Made some holes. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. Just stole the seeds and put the seeds in the cinder blocks with some dirt down in there. And his nanny, Sister Tissa, said, I'm not going to dig them up. Oh, well, I just won't be having no sunflowers, wow. I guess. And now the sunflower is taller than me, <laughs> right, about to bloom because we just let the seed do what it do. That's and awesome. all we got to do is water it. Come on, that's, <laughs> water. that's so awesome. Thank you, Drew. So young Prince, Thank man, you. you inspired all Thank of you, us, Drew, brother. For preaching that, uh, Sister Tista said, yes, preach, Beyonce. I mean, <laughs> pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I said, the book of Beyonce, 12 and 6. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> talking about, okay, ladies, now let's get information. And then can you walk and talk at, at the, the same, same time? time? Amen. And you tell the devil all the stuff you got to the left. <laughs> I'm walking in my right mind. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> also reference Beyonce 24-7. I'm a need for y'all to quit. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's his fault. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Sister Hall said, can't hide from the sun, S-O-N. Can't grow in our faith without the sun, S-O-N. Yeah. And then Sister Tonette said, let the sun shine in. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't produce without some heat and a whole lot of water. Yes. Jael said, dunk me in the word, God. <laughs> <laughs> Tonette said, thirst after the word of God. Come on. Jael says, pests equal distractions. Jael, get them out of here. Get him out, Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Hey, and Sister Nina said she's going to try that. Hey, I think man. she might be talking about the Vaseline on the step. <laughs> it works. It works. Hey, uh, let me see. Sister Tonette said it's never too late when a lesson is learned. Amen. That's right. That's Amen. right. Amen. Let me see. Uh, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Jael said, that's my word. Hallelujah. Oh, Marianne said, uh, Oh, Tonette says, stake your claim on holy ground. That's it. Put your flag in the ground. Amen. Your That's faith it, flag. Mary, I said, Miss Mama used to say, if they ain't talking about you, you ain't doing nothing. Mm. God bless Miss Mama. God rest her soul. Amen. That's a word from God. <laughs> Tonette said, cut, 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 cut the root of deception, deceit, doubt, and hopelessness. Come on. Amen. That's so good. Let's see. Shout out to Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Rachel. 
one of my former co workers, Rachel Markham. Right. Amen. Hi, AG, all the way from Detroit. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, y'all, there's some good comments you guys got going on tonight. Amen. That's some good stuff. Sister Nina said, for my vegetable crops, I use lots of water and I regularly weed the crop. This can be the same for our spiritual life. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Provide lots of the word of God and closely watch to pull out the bad stuff. You know, I read that earlier today. I was reading about summertime. I read that earlier today that the heat of the sun is also what produces the weeds. Mm. That, that's why we get so many weeds in the, in, in the summertime mm. versus having so many weeds like that morning glory. Yeah. You know how that morning glory be trying to choke everything out in my garden. Yeah. But that's why we get so many weeds in the, in the uh, summer versus the spring. The heat energy of the sun is what causes those weed seeds to germinate yeah. and without the heat energy of the sun the weed seeds won't germinate and I had the revelation this was about two o'clock this afternoon that it is the trials and difficulties and challenges in our lives that causes us to focus on circumstance mm. in our lives mm. it's the heat energy of the sun that causes us to focus on the circumstances on our lives and when we focus on the circumstances that's what chokes the life out of the wow, world amen Woo. we have Woo. had a great time with you guys tonight keep your comments coming we're going to continue to uh, respond to you guys as the night progresses um just just was grateful to be able to sit with you all and to share the word of god uh, again we are encouraged uh and, and look forward to you guys joining us on sunday as we again begin to roll around those principles that god was sharing with us concerning repositioning ourselves for the greater things that god so hope you can tune in our crew love you guys y'all representing yes. you know what I'm saying? keep on doing what you're doing and again if you're looking for a good church you're looking for a good you're looking for a home and you're looking for shepherds who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. understanding we welcome you to real life christian center a place where everybody is somebody hey you, it's okay to not be okay at real life christian <laughs> center you do not have to have it all together but we know that as this epidemic so to speak uh, allow or the situation is allowing churches to come back open you may be looking for your shepherd and God has been speaking to you and we would love uh, to, to, to and be honored mm -hmm. if you would if you want to come and join us but by all means you continue to check us out mm -hmm. you continue to look at us I'm just kind of mm -hmm. doing two things at once you continue to check us out let us you know uh, and if God leads you our way we you always have a seat at Real Life Christian Center. For all of you guys that are continually praying for uh, Baby Doll and I, keep us up in your prayer. We know that as we position ourselves to move forward as shepherds and embracing God's new way, that the only one that is mad is the devil. Mm -hmm. And he's going to try to put everything in his way to try to keep us from accomplishing way, that yeah. or in <laughs> our way. But we're going to be like Martin. We're going to tell the devil, you get to step it. Because we're going to move to what God has for us. Yeah, and we're going to yeah. do it uh, because the power of God uh, has given us the ability to move forward. So with that said and done, remember, champions, get planted, get watered, get rooted, get fertilized. More importantly, let's get growing. Amen. Amen. You want to pray? Let's lead us out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to be gathered even over uh, social media. We thank you for your word of God, and we thank you that your word will not return unto you void. We thank you that it has been engrafted in our hearts, and we are expecting a harvest from this word that we received on today. I pray for every person that is watching, yes, those that are chiming in now, those that will watch in the future, we cover them with our prayers in the name of Jesus. You know exactly what they need. You know where they are. We ask that you would encourage them, strengthen them, deliver them, help them. Whatever it is that they stand in need of on today, God, we just thank you and we add our faith with yes, theirs. Yes. And we believe you for your will to come to pass in their lives. Yes, we bind yes. the hand of the enemy that will come up against them in any way, shape, or form. Yes, we cancel every assignment that been unleashed over their lives and we thank you that you've given us power over the wicked 
Just thank you for the victory. For you always cause us to triumph yes, in Lord. Christ yes. Jesus. So wherever we are, whatever we're going through, whatever yes, they Lord. are facing in this moment, yes, we Lord. thank you that the greater one lives on the inside yes, of them. Lord. We pray that you would save. We pray that you will heal. We pray that you will deliver and set free in every person's life in the name of Jesus. We honor you, God, and we lift up the family of our dear warrior brother, Leotis Compton. We intercede yes, for his Lord. family, yes, and we Lord. ask, oh God, that you would minister to them right yes, where Lord. they are yes, in the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. We thank you yes, that Lord. you are their comforter, yes, and so Lord. we just pray for them. Yes, we Lord. pray for every person that was touched by brother Leotis's life, yes, and Lord. we just ask that you would Strengthen them by your spirit. Yes, Even when they don't know that we're praying, yes, we will continue to pray. We pray, God, that you would raise up an army of believers to surround them and cover them with strength and cover them with peace yes, in the Lord. name Amen. of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you would watch over your people as we leave this place, but never your presence. Yes, we thank you that, as always, we are the head not and the not tail. the tail. Above, above and not beneath. And not beneath. That we are blessed, blessed going in and blessed, blessed coming out. out. That greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And, and because of this, God, you have called us to be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. Come on. And as a result, come on, champions. We, we do have, have a right to, to expect, expect great things. things. For that, we give you honor and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said together, amen and amen to God. Amen. amen. <laughs> we love you guys. Love you guys. We rolling out to commission until my change comes. <laughs> Go buy it on Go iTunes. Get it. We love you guys. Remember, right protection, right principles, right people. More importantly, the right perception. We'll see you guys soon. Love y'all.